Welcome to this podcast is making me thirsty. The number one destination for Seinfeld fans. This is two up and two down. Here's our producer, Chris, to start us off. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Two Up and Two Down. Today, we are doing the pledge drive. And Tony, what do you got for your first up? The pledge drive, the uh, the old uh, trifecta, if you will, that completes the trilogy of the um, the the low talker, the close talker, and now the high talker. Um, yeah. So season six, Gamal Prost, we got to give two ups. We got to give two downs. Um, I, I got a lot of notes on this one. I just feel like there was a lot of stuff jammed into this episode, whether ups, downs, everything, just a lot going on. Um, a lot of guest stars, just a lot happening. We talked to a lot of guest stars in this episode too. So, um, that's always fun. Um, thing about ups too in this episode, a lot of it's small, quick things. So I have a lot written down, but, uh, just in the interest of trying to get a lot into one up, um, I'm going to go with the, um, the, it, it, there's a conversation now I'm trying to remember if I did this right. If if they're all, um, they're they're in monks, and you got the old, uh, you know, if my parents had a mantle, I might be a completely different person. Uh, you know, oh, and Jerry's asking George to help. Oh, I'll run it by a few people, and Jerry says, you know, do the thing where you lie to everyone. Love that line. That's one of my favorite lines. And then we do the humor section. Come on, the whole thing with Jerry. Just that whole that's a good little monk scene. A lot packed into it. Ton of great lines. Uh, of course, great back and forth with George and Jerry. The whole do your thing that you lie to everyone. I always love that line. Uh, you know, the mantle lines an all timer. Uh, just a lot going on in this one. I feel like Larry David has fingerprints all over this, even though it's Gamble Pro. So it might be one of these ones that he kind of uh, punched up a little bit, if you will. Um, but but that's my first up. Just that that little uh, dynamic with uh, with with George and Jerry and monks coming back after Jerry threw the card out, and they're kind of talking it through. And George's like, ah, you know, I love what George has the high ground, and George all of a sudden now he's a big hot show at, at, at the Yankees, and I'll see what I can do. And uh, you know, Jerry obviously sees right through it. Yeah, do the thing where you lie to everyone. <laughs> great line, great little scene. So that's my uh, my first up. Yeah, I love that line too. So, uh, yeah, great uh, Jerry uh, line there with George. Uh, Chris, over to you. What's your first up? Yeah, a lot of good points. Just like moment, 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 right? And I have a bunch of those. I don't even have many notes. It's just like you know, a lot of a lot of guest stars. To your point. Um, so I'll, I'll just take one. the one scene I actually really liked was. Uh, Nana calling from Chemical Bank and Elaine picks up the phone. Always enjoyed that one. She's on the phone. Jerry's doing his thing. Like, and she goes, drop dead. And Jerry's, Jerry does his pointy. I, I can't even do it, but it's, it's really funny. He's pointing down um, as if it's, uh, you know, Noreen and the, uh, the high talker there. So, <laughs> and then later, obviously, they find out it was Nana, but, uh, I love that Elaine picked up the phone, the whole drop dead line uh, for me. First up. I love that. I love Jerry's reaction. Oh, you told my Nana to drop dead. <laughs> so, yeah, good one, Chris. Uh, Tony, back to you. What's your uh, second up? Yeah, it always reminds me that Lessica, uh, shout out to Lessica, his great grandmother. She used to answer the phone, talk with that weird voice. I still to this day don't know if it was a great, if you guys were still messing with me or that actually was Nick on the other line, but he got cut, tied up there once on the phone call with uh, yelling at it. I'm like, Nick, just cut it out. It's like, this is his grandmother. I'm like, no, it's not. I don't even know. That's one of those things you never know. Uh, listen, this is, uh, like I said, so much little things here that are popping out to me off the page, but um, I, I love this this scene. This is one of my favorite scenes, and it's Re Rebecca Staub, friend of the show, and Jerry's, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> when he's like, um, you know, she she um, he's practicing with her, and he's like, you know, reading the script, and I'm Jerry Seinfeld. I tell jokes for a living, doing that whole little thing with her there, and then she sees the thing in the in, in the garbage and the whole thing. It's not like, uh, you know, you signed it, you signed it, and you addressed the envelope. Like you painted the picture, and wrote the poem, the whole thing. It's another kind of Elmer Fuddish type thing there when he's just like, you know, well, what's I I can save out the door, you know, to her, but. Um, uh, I do like that 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 kind of scene. It's one of the better breakup scenes with Jerry and his girlfriend. There's actually something there. She, she gets a little bit overreacting, but you know she could be a little bit. You know, when do you throw the card out? It's a good premise. 
Um, I do like that. I just love Jerry's little fake acting too when he's like reading into the script and uh, practicing with her. I always thought that was a great little, uh, great little scene. So that's my my second up. Yeah, I like that one too. Thanks, Tony. Uh, so Chris, over to you. What's your uh, second up? It's funny you mentioned breakup. They didn't break up, but I love Jerry's confidence when he's at the door. He's like, "All right, I'll see you at the pledge drive." Like classic Jerry. Uh, and yeah, listen, for my money, Rebecca Staub. My top Jerry girlfriend. I think I've said it a couple of times. You know, top five. But, you know, given, given the day, unbelievable. Uh, yeah, a lot going on. Uh, Nana, I mentioned, I love. I kind of tied her in when she was at Chemical Bank. James Reynolds, friend of the show. Unbelievable job. Um, you know, Uncle Leo. And there's a lot going on here. I mean, uh, you know what? I'm going to go... <laughs> I'm going to go Mr. Morgan. Uh, you, know, gonna, you know, it's a small scene, but it's an important scene. You know, obviously George is sitting there cutting the, the Snickers. Uh, I just love Mr. Morgan. It, it, you know, he was only there for a couple of minutes, but just really packed his punch here. You know, oh, we're doing enough with Channel 11. Oh, Channel 11, you know, that old thing. And, you know, from New York, you know, PIX, like the back of your hand. I mean, and you know how it's tied into the Yankees. And just, it just resonated. And then, I love Mr. Morgan all of a sudden seeing him do that then kind of just all of a sudden pivots in only a way that Costanza can make someone pivot. Uh, maybe George is up to something here. Uh, you know. So, and then he ends up getting tarred a bowl, the whole thing. So for me, Mr. Morgan, friend of the show, second one. up. Yeah. One of my favorite interviews was with uh, Tom Wright who plays Mr. Morgan. And of course he, if you listen to his interview, you know, he has, he has a Yankee tie in uh, from when he was growing up. So, yeah, uh, good one there, Chris. Uh, so now we're going to go for downs. Uh, Tony, back to you. What's your first down? Yeah, I love the Channel 11 stuff, too. PIX just brings back so many great memories. Rizzuto, the whole thing. When, when Seinfeld used to be on Channel 11 with Cheers, 11, 11, 30, the whole just love PIX, love Channel 11, love Mr. Morgan. Um my first down, though, is kind of the elephant in the room here for me. I, I, and I'm glad I'm going first because it's a big down for me. I don't have a lot of downs written down. But uh, the middle finger stuff with George, this is this is season six. But George gets a little bit hot headed in this one, chasing the guy down at the end. Oh, I want to I shake his hand, but I can't. I can't stand that part with the I, I like Tartable. Don't don't get me wrong, but I, I don't love that guy's ridiculous. The whole the whole premise of him chasing him down. I don't like George is getting so upset. I can see the one time with, the, you know, Elaine's sister, the waitress there scratching her face. Kind of funny. But they 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 do this thing where they just they just let George get needled the whole episode till he explodes and that that's what we don't like. That's this is a season six, but it feels later to me. Um, you know, so I mean, that's going to be my down. It's a big part about the episode, but it's it's just I, it never lands with me very well at all. Like I just I don't like where it goes. Um, I just I, it, it never. It, it teeters on a bad George is not, I mean, the stuff O'Hara mentions great, you know, PIX with, with Morgan and the whole, how do you eat channel 11? That's good. The middle finger stuff. Uh, that's, that's my down. Yeah. I think you, you definitely nailed it there with, uh, it, with the waitresses. That was fine too much with the guy at the gas station and all that. So, uh, all right. Uh, Chris over to you. What's your first down? I thought Tony was just going to give us the uh, the guy at the gas station. He usually likes those kind of, or doesn't like those weird kind of one-off characters of like a gas station or something. I kind of like that guy, but anyway. Um, yeah, no, I wrote, I wrote it too. I wrote something a little similar. I won't use it, but it was a weird episode with George. Like, he didn't enter, I wrote it down, until six minutes and 30 seconds into the episode. That's a little odd. It's a little slow for getting him involved. And it was just it was, yeah, it was an okay George. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't great. Uh, well, you know, other elephant in the room, and you, 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 Tony mentioned this as he kicked off, uh, enough with the close talker, the low talker, and now the high talker. Okay, enough. Uh, two, two was enough. Funny. I didn't need a third of it. I, and I know that's what this, this episode is based on in some way with, with the high talker, but... I don't know. It's we talk about just going to the well a little, little too much. Like, could they have created something else? Did we did we need the talker? I, I don't know. Like, again, close talker was what uh, season five, low talker season five, this season six. Like, it's just 
for me, it was just like, I was like, when, I remember originally watching, I'm like, oh, okay, this again, the, the talker again. As a theme, it, it didn't, I'm not devaluing the show and, and the funniness of the low talker because I did enjoy those characters and what came of it. But, but the premise, as Tony mentioned, the structure of just using that again always kind of just didn't sit well with me. So first down. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I got your point there. Uh, so you one, uh, Tony, back to you. What's your uh, second down? Yeah, I think where they lost me and I wrote it down as a down, I won't use it because it's tied into to a Harris is, is the is the final scene with Kramer and the high talker. That's where the, that's where I'm just like, un, it's kind of funny that Elaine mixes up the voice on a call. That could have just been it. Oh, he's I talk, but the, the, to kind of carry it all the way through to the end. Uh, I, I didn't love it. Um, uh, that was going to be kind of my down, but I, I think this is this is a down. I think uh, uh, O'Hara likes to say this a lot about me, and, and I guess I wrote it down here, so I'll use it. There's just there's not a lot of Kramer in this episode. Uh, Kramer, Kramer gives me a line which I absolutely love. I think it I think it went pretty far in our lines bracket. You're not you're not as missing because she's passing those bum checks all over town, and she finally pissed off the wrong people. Great Kramer line, yes. Other than that, and I'll tie it into the end because I don't like the end. Uh, so so it's not just Kramer, not enough, because when you get Kramer, you know, and he gets Nana to give him more money. And I don't love the ending with Leo. In fact, I don't like it at all. Stop the show. He's on a fixed income. Uh, you know, th- this this episode, this episode plays more season seven, eight, nine than it does, you know, five uh, in that middle six area where you not know what you're going to get. And I think some of that uh, silliness with Leo um and and the George we mentioned um you know it, it, the high talker kind of as O'Hara mentioned it's not a lot there so you know not enough good Kramer and and the ending with Leo kind of tied into that Kramer stuff uh that's my uh, and and even the the high talker tied in with Kramer so even the Kramer we gave I didn't love except for that one line that I gave you so that's my uh, my second down yeah good points there Tony uh so Chris uh give us your second down. Yeah, yeah, he's tough on Kramer, but I, I, you know, Kramer is a supporting actor. Don't forget that, folks. And that's what he he's the tote bag thing and Hallmark card. Was this the episode he comes in? Jerry, you have my Fortune magazine. I love that Kramer's getting Fortune magazine. Um, and I didn't the Uncle Leo stuff. I still get a chuckle. Stop the show. Fix. Don't mind it. Uh, you know, and I love Kramer saying, "Hey, hey, Nana. You know, how about you fork over a little of." Uh, yeah, Kramer made her fork over fifteen hundred bucks. Great Kramer, again. But I think Tony does want more, but that's okay. Kramer just it gives you just enough. All right, all right. I'm getting nit- nitpicky here. You know, we talk about Jerry. You know, not having beers and this and that. How about this? Jerry finally found out that Nana was alive. Okay, and he rushes off to PBS. Can you believe that? You know. <laughs> He just found out she left, and Kramer goes, come on, we got to go to PBS. Wouldn't he go check on her? You know, nothing. Elaine just hung up, and he just rushes off to see a girl, essentially, at the end, you know. Uh, so for me, a bad job by Jerry there. Usually he's got a little bit of a heart. That's his grandmother for crying out loud. Should have called back. Should have called Uncle Lou. Should have called somebody to make sure she's okay before he runs off uh, to PBS. So second down. All right, good pickup there. All right, uh, so that's the ups and the downs. Uh, Tony, let's go back to you. Uh, give us your final thoughts in the grade here. Yeah, I wish he went first on the grade because I like to kind of see where he's at. But you know what? This is what it's all about. We have no idea where anyone's going to give. We don't know what we're doing here. Uh, ton of guest stars, as we mentioned. Leo, Tartable, Nana. We didn't mention friend of the show, Noreen. We didn't mention friend of the show, James Reynolds. I mean, uh, Rebecca Staub, we brought up Tom Wright. We brought up, of course. But this episode, just so many guest stars. I mean, it's a very good season six episode. It's it's a, it's a, a it's above average. You know, it's nowhere near what we love about two through five. It's nowhere near what we hate about eight and nine, even though I've kind of touched on that. Um the 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 it, it was hard to find like ups and downs. It was just one of these things. There's a lot going on. Great lines. Um, you know, the guy in the alleyway with Nana is one of the best, especially when you watch it live the first time. It really gets you really good. Uh, you know, the Nana's missing line by Kramer. Um, you know, do that thing where you lie to everyone. The Channel Eleven stuff. 
Um, I, I, I like this episode, but I don't love it. Uh, so, you know, agreed. I got two written down. I'm talking myself down to the lower one, and I think I'm going to be fair on this one. There's a, I need to leave a lot on the table for some of the season next six episodes I like more than this. Um, so to a Harris point, you play out the high talker. Uh, you don't give me enough Kramer. I'm going to be upset. We all know that. Uh, I don't love the Leo ending. The ending ending is even weird, too. It's very uh, Twilight Zone-ish when they all start using their forks and knives and Elaine starts freaking out. I kind of forgot about that ending till the rewatch. All that's to say the pledge drive is a clean B, just a solid B. Uh, I, I think it's a, I think it's a good, very good episode. Uh, I always went as high as a B plus. I think I'm looking at that and I'm thinking to myself, this is not a B plus episode. Um, I wouldn't argue B minus. Um, it's somewhere in that range. So I'm just going to go clean B, keep it simple. I don't think I've given out that many clean Bs now that I'm thinking about it. So I'm glad I got one here. Season six, that's what season six is for. That B, B minus, B plus kind of clump. Um, and so this is one of the, those ones I'm going to give uh, a, a solid B to the pledge drive. And Tony, I'm just interested. What, what's your thoughts on uh, Mr. Pitt in this episode? Mr. Pitt starts it all right with the uh, with the cutting up the, the the candy bar. But that's about it. You know, I didn't even write down much Pitt on this one, um, although I, I one thing I didn't mention was the while we're here is the uh, the Jerry stand up with the um, the the Mazel Tov, you know, the, the Jerry stand up, you know, um, putting it all together in one card. Uh, I don't know if you were involved in how we used to, we used to make prank phone calls all the time. Remember prank phone call in the, the chocolate cookie company, the, the cookie cakes in the Nanua Mall. And we called and we said, you know, make a cake and put Mazel Tov, happy birthday, bon voyage, all that writing on what cake. And we, we called it in. I don't know what the hell we were doing, 10, 11 years old. Anyway, that made me laugh because Jerry had that idea too. So that's my, uh, that's my great clean B. And Mr. Pip didn't bother me in this one. He was, wasn't there enough, you know? All right. Very good. Uh, Chris, over to you. You're great, please. Yeah. The way my partner was talking, I thought he was going to go lower. Uh, I'm not going to lie here. And, and I have two grades as well. Uh, you know, I wrote down, I wrote down here. Nice balance. That's what I wrote on the show for the show. Very good guest stars. I wrote, but here's my big note. There was no huge moment for a laugh, right? You know, the old ha ha, as George would say to uh, the Rosses. Like, there wasn't that moment. It was just steady, you know, to your point, season six, like Mr. Pitt, the knife and fork, you know, everyone loves to reference that in real life. Okay. Uh, Stop, loved her. Kelly Caulfield, forget about it. Uh, Nana, you know, Uncle Leo, bum checks. Uh, Everything, everyone was good. Everyone was good. But for, for, I need that moment where I'm like, you know, laughing out loud, right? Uncontrollably. And you usually get that in, in, in many season six episodes, not this one. So I'm going to take it down just a notch. And B minus, I'm giving uh, Gamma and Pros here for the pledge drive. It's, there's nothing wrong. I'll never turn it off. And I love every guest star. But it's that moment you look for. And I didn't get one of those moments. That's a that's actually a really fair point. I just can't believe you went lower than me. I thought I thought you liked this episode more than me. That's why I wanted you to go first. If you would have given it a B minus first, I would have given it a B minus two. Welcome. <laughs> He's right. There is a big laugh. And two down. There you go, folks. So that's a B and B minus. Uh, good, you know, overall grades. I think for the play drives, like you said, Chris, you're right. It's you're you're watching it through and through, but you're not getting that big solid laugh uh, that you would in some other ones. So uh, yeah, good job there guys with your analysts and we hope everybody tunes in for the next one. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.